Welcome to another teardown. Uh, I've gotten lots of requests to tear this engine down uh, from both my employees and uh, people on YouTube. This is a, an 8.3 liter V10 out of what I believe to be an 0506 Dodge Viper. Uh, when I get cores, they're, obviously they're core engines, and, and core is usually someone's old engine, a bad engine, something that needs to be repaired or is useful for parts only. And when we get these cores in, we just we don't repair them. We just sell the good parts, trash the bad parts, and move on to the next. So this is the first Dodge Viper engine I've ever had the chance to buy. And uh, of course, when the chance came around, I jumped all over it because, well, I wanted to. I'm like a little child. Uh, and upon initial inspection, it actually looks pretty decent. It turns over, it's not locked up. At least, I don't think, it's been here for a while, so I, I don't believe it's locked up. Uh, but uh, it is time to tear this thing down. We're gonna find out everything that's wrong with it. We're gonna tear it all the way down. Um, hopefully it's not quite as, uh, as catastrophic of a failure as the LS7 block. Uh, I have hope that I'll get at least half of an engine to sell. I have an engine worth of parts. But uh, I'm, I'm very excited about taking this thing apart. It looks like a big, easy pushrod engine. I, I don't think I'm gonna have too many issues. Before I get into taking that thing apart, I'm kind of show you what I've got on the chopping block. Uh, here is a K20 out of a Civic Si. I have uh, very little idea what's wrong with it. Um, I've gotten actually two of these bad engines to take apart. Uh, hopefully I uh, get a good head out of it. That's a lot of money on these things. and. Uh, We'll see what we do on that. I've also got some LT stuff, some Gen 5 V8 uh, engines coming in. I'm very excited to take those apart. They're out of, uh, I think, 15 and 16 Corvettes. So that'll be pretty cool. And then I've got my wall of Cummins engines to take apart, which I don't know if I'll do a video on. I don't know if there's a memory card big enough for that. These are quite complicated to take apart compared to these pushrod engines and four cylinders. Uh, I've got another Mazda Speed 3, Mazda Speed 6, CX-7 motor, and then my collection of Miata engines, which I just keep on hand here for parts for my Miatas. I also have something else came in, which I'm pretty excited about, is this. It's a uh, ML63 6.3 liter naturally aspirated engine. I think it's an M156. So that'll be a kind of cool one to take apart. I don't know if I'll shoot a video on it, but we'll see. So here's the Viper engine. Before I start taking it apart, kind of show you uh, its condition. I got it sitting like this because I think it's going to be easier to get the pan and heads off. Um, I know it's still got a flywheel on it, so that's going to fight me, but it'll be a lot easier to move this engine around without a pan or heads on it. Uh, it's an aluminum engine, but it's still, still pretty heavy for me. So anyway, let's get started. So we're going to take the valve covers off first. Uh, bear with me. I've never taken a Viper engine apart, so uh, this, this might be pretty fun. Oh, cool. It's got some, some nasty stuff coming out of it. Well, it's got some water, some signs of water in it, probably because it sat outside at some point, but I don't see anything too tore up. On to the next. Oh, that one had a bunch of oil in it. So this head looks pretty decent. Um, as you can see down here, there's some signs of water. It's a little bit of corrosion down here, but it's not too bad. Everything looks all right. But this side, the push rods are just not here. So I would be willing to bet that the problem is going to be on this side of the motor. Uh, I find this a lot of times. They don't really put all the parts back in them when they find an issue. I mean, techs don't usually get paid to reassemble a bad engine, so they kind of just do what they can, put all the parts together, and, and go from there. Um, also, I can see some tool marks on this head, so and that head bolt's loose. So I bet there, there's an issue on this head. We're going to knock the pan off of it and get back to this, and then we'll start with the good, the head we think is okay, <laughs> and then we'll end on this because I'm sure there's a problem in this general region. And it's a Chrysler, and this is what they do. They make big messes when they scatter, or when you scatter them. Actually, it's less of a mess than the heads were. Oh, inside the pan is dirty, sludgy, but I don't see any signs of metal in there. That's a good sign. I might get a good bottom end out of this. I can hope. But let's get the pickup 
out of it. It's a gigantic pan. So, well, there's some, a little bit of debris, very little bit of debris on the pickup, not enough to clog it. This is kind of, so this actually looks like it's in uh, pretty good shape. Tolerance is pretty tight. It's a lot tighter than an LS engine. These don't have any side to side play in the journal. This, this drives me crazy. I don't know why Chrysler does this. They put the trigger wheel for the, uh, for like the ECM in the middle of the crankshaft. It's like the most illogical place for it. Why, you should either put it on the flywheel or on the crank pulley. I, I just don't understand. It makes, oh, that's a whole other ordeal. But this looks all right in here. I don't see any damage. Okay, moment of truth. Probably gonna be all kinds of stuff. Yeah, pressure rods everywhere. So, uh, the head actually looks pretty decent. I don't see any issues whatsoever. Uh, it's a lot of carbon, but it's dirty, which you would expect. But I don't see any issues. The only issue I see is there's a little bit of rust in the cylinder. Um, again, that was kind of the same side that had moisture uh, with the valve, you know, on the rockers and push rods, just because they probably left, probably left it sitting outside for a little while. I don't understand why people do that, but if they don't have space in their shop, I, I, I'm, no, I still don't understand. Just keep them covered. It's pretty easy. Now let's get the other side off. All right, moment of truth. Oh, it's a Chrysler. And Chryslers do what Chryslers do. And they drop a valve seat. <laughs> God, I, I wish I could say I was surprised, but I'm not. This is, uh, I kind of expected this to be honest, but at the same time, uh, a Viper engine, like a Dodge Viper should be the best. Like if you have the best machining tolerances, if you have the best parts, um, this should never happen. So if this is the best that the mid 2000s Chrysler is, that's not good. I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna say I dislike all Chrysler products, but I mean, if it's a 2737476164, it could drop a valve seat and apparently also a Dodge Viper. So thankfully the damage is kind of minimal. Obviously this piston is probably, you know, if, it, if this was like a, an old small block, I'd say just, I hate to use the word send it, but I would just use it. Uh, but I probably wouldn't throw a Viper engine together with this piston. So it looks like we might get nine out of 10, 90% of the pistons. God, math is easy when there's 10 cylinders.
So I've got all my rods and pistons out. Uh, there's a lot of them, a lot more than I'm used to. But I didn't find damage on any of them. There's some signs over here, some rust. Like I said, I think this thing got, had some water in it from sitting. But this is the piston that the from the cylinder the valve seat dropped. And it has a pretty significant ding in it. I was concerned the rod might be damaged, but I don't think it is. And it turns out that these are not semi these are not full floaters, these are semi-floaters, which it's kind of odd. You know, you'd think a vehicle made this late and in the uh, performance side of things uh, would have um, full floaters, but it does not appear to have full floaters. But uh, regardless, it, everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. I didn't see any major bearing damage. Here's the worst bearing I saved it. And uh, it does have some wear, um, but really not, it's really not that bad. There's another one here. It's really not that bad. Um, so it wasn't an oiling issue. Uh, we've already proved that it, it dropped the valve seat. That's why it was a core. Um, you know, I can see with having a dinged piston why you wouldn't want to slap another head on it, but uh, it probably would have been just fine. But you know, it's a Viper, so you probably don't deal with just fine. You strive for perfection unless it's machining uh, valve seat holes. That's probably not so perfect. So the block actually looks pretty decent. The bores are clean. There's no marks, no gouges, even in this cylinder, which this was the cylinder here that uh, the valve seat dropped. So thankfully it dropped in a way where it only dinged the center of the piston. It didn't like crack a crown off or cause any loose pieces to go through the motor. This is the only real issue here. Um, for the love of God, guys, don't let engines sit outside. Like, why would you do that? I. Anyway, uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. We're going to knock the lifters out of it, uh, the front cover off of it, and we're going to go ahead and pull the cam and crank out and see if we find any more damage. But So I've got this all blasted apart, and uh, the mains all look nice. Bottom of the bores are nice. Uh, everything looks pretty decent, but I did find another issue I'm not that happy about. Um, it wouldn't be a Chrysler if it was just one problem. I really like Chrysler, I promise. This cam uh, towards the front of the engine is just the lobes are just smoked at least for um, at least I'd say two cylinders worth are just annihilated I mean I've seen worse of course but uh, how does this have a lifter problem and a drop valve seat that's like wild to me it's like two separate things trying to kill an expensive engine but uh, all the rods and pistons are out heads look good uh, everything else looks good. I got a lot of sellable parts, a lot more than the LS7. So uh, if, if you account the fact that I have a cam and one head that are trash, everything else is good. Uh, I, I hope to at least double my money on this thing, but uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe make it a little extra. Viper parts aren't exactly uh, the, the highest demand parts, but they're also pretty hard to come by. So that went pretty smooth, surprisingly smooth, actually. Uh, the only thing that really pissed me off was it kind of leaked some coolant down my leg and turned me into Miles Davis. But all of the parts that I pulled out that I'll be able to sell make me very happy. I've got a whole pallet of Viper parts. I never thought I'd have Viper parts to sell. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I've got some pretty cool videos on engine teardown uh, planned. I've got a couple K20s from 06 Up Honda Civic SIs. I have no idea what's wrong with them. Well, I mean, I have an idea, but I have a small idea what's wrong with them. I also have uh, some Gen 5 LT engines from GM. Uh, I think they're from C7 Corvettes, some 6.2s. I have no idea their condition, broken pistons, but uh, that'll be a kind of fun one to tear down. I've never torn one of those down. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video, and thanks for watching.